What's up, everybody? Lex Ryder here, the Queer Alpaca, and I am here with my good friend... Matt Latz, or June Cleavage, in this case. You got Matt this time around. Right. Um, so, I've been a fan of the Phoenix Wright games, the original trilogy at least, for years now. And they're so much fun, and it's a whole story, but they're not voiced. So, Matt and I are going to fill in that... Deficit, I yes. guess. We're going to voice them for you tonight. Yes. And I have never played this game. So. Right, yeah. Matt is playing this blind. Uh, and that's why I'm here, so that we don't have to look up a walkthrough. That's always good. All right, so we're just going straight into this? Yeah. All right, and we're going to play this game. Well, yeah, because this is the whole trilogy, so yeah. Okay, yeah. So just... Yeah. All right. The turnabout. Or the first turnabout. <gasps> Gasp! 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 Gasp. <laughs> Damn it, why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. Most of the cases don't tell show you who the uh Okay. Killer is. But this, one but this is the tutorial. Okay, cool. Gotcha. I'll make it look like he did it. August 3rd, 1947. <laughs> 1947 a.m. <laughs> District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. English. It's not my friend today. Alright. You be Phoenix. Uh, so what kind uh, of person is he? He's he's a very he, he always tries to do the right thing and help people. He's a Dudley uh, Do Right. Yes. Boy, am I nervous. No. No. Fe make Phoenix sort of the straight man for this, because okay. of all the other crazy shit that goes on around him. Cool. Boy, am I nervous. Yeah, and when it's, it's blue like that, it's his internal monologue. Yes, okay, so boy, am I nervous. <laughs> All right. Right. Oh, she has a lot of cleavage. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, hiya, Chief. Whew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and about your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe him my I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way that I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. I'll be a Larry as well. It's over! My life, everything, it's all over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! Oh. I gotta do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Aw, oh, Nick, you've got to tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. 
And I'm a private, private eye. eye. No, he's a he's a lawyer. And I Which am is a the lawyer. same thing as the private eye of this universe, as you yes. will discover. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy that arrest they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. <laughs> My best I'm so I'm so grown up. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying when some something smells it's, it's usually, usually the, the butts. butts. Lovely. In the twenty three years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Like all the, the, the clone heads on the top. Yeah. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I, um, I'm a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge for your client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Ascertain. Oh, I, I <laughs> did not realize what that said. Um, ascertain. Yes, Your Honor. I was reading it too fast. Oh, hand shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case, Larry Butts. Defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. <coughs> this is a murder trial. Tell me what's the victim's name. I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait. Uh-oh. No. No way I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the, the victim. Of, co of course I know the victim's name. I am... I just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Well, she's Charlene, isn't she? Yeah. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it at any time, okay? Okay. Remember to, oh. Remember to check it often. Do it for me. Please, I'm begging you. So we do that now? Yeah. Cindy. Something. Uh, if you... It oh, yeah, you can hit R. Okay. And now you've got the profiles, and you can go to hers and see her last name. Cindy Stone, age 22, the victim in this case, a model. She lived in an apartment by herself. So, how do we get out of that? R tab again. again. Tab again. Oh, tab again. Okay. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me what the cause of death. She died because she was hit with a blunt object, right? Yes. She was struck by, well, she was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed. That's for sure. Well then, first a question for the prosecution. Prosecution. My tongue is like big in my mouth right now, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. 
As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence that's added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. So we can look at it. Okay. Okay, cool. Bang. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, um Chief, you. what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss anything that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. <clears throat> Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the vi victim had recently dumped you? Hey! Watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Antony! Um... Didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or seeing me, ever. What's it to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she would completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies. All of it. Lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris on 7.30 the day before the murder. Hmm. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude! No way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? <laughs> yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She had an OnlyFans account. Yes. <laughs> She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Stop... My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof, Vince. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused's motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not look this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Gulp. Well, did you or did you not? 
Well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. You are not doing yourself any favors, dude. Uh-oh, there you went. What do I do? Have him, from an have him answer honestly, or stop him from answering? Don't think you can, you can fuck it up right now. Okay. This is just a tutorial. Let's have him answer honestly. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, <coughs> yeah, yeah, I was, I was there, I was. Order. Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove that Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order, order in this court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. The real murderer. This is bad. <laughs> On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sowett to the stand. Do you want me to do him since you're doing everybody else? Or I mean, do you're doing... You can, but you're doing Phoenix, so you're going to be talking to yourself at a couple of points. You're like, cool. I mean, it's cool. Yeah, you were doing him earlier, so go right ahead. Okay. Mr. Sowett. You sell newspaper subscriptions, is that correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawyer, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving. Dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of these. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Electricity in Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes. Uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies of the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He, he was lying? Your client is innocent, right? then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Hmm. How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. 
First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open up the court record with tab, then point out the contradictions in the testimony. You don't need to open it right this second. Oh, gotcha. Whoops. Okay. Oh. Okay, so it's going to go through the statements he already said, one at a time. Alright. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. You have, that nothing can, we don't have anything to contradict that. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it was strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I should probably be letting you read these, I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. I quailed and frightened, found myself unable to go inside. I have to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to the nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly it was 1 p.m. Without a doubt, the defendant's sitting right over here. I'm getting a phone call. call. I, I can't do that right now. Sorry. That's all of it. There must be a contradiction in there somewhere. Examine the court record with tab if something strikes you as being suspicious. Then, find the evidence that contradicts his testimony and present it to the court. So how do we know when so there, there's a... There, there's a statement he said that you have something in the court record that that doesn't line up with. Okay, well let's look. Um, it's not that. Uh, time of death between 4 and 5. That it, that's it, right there. Because he said it was 1 p.m. And she was killed between 4 and 5 p.m. Right. So there's no way he could have. So what do we do? So hit present? tap. No, not yet. Oh, okay. Just hit tap back out of it. All right. Oh, we got to get to the to the statement. Right. Thinking of strange I look inside the jar. Okay. So now tab so, and so it's like the autop and then e. You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Uh, yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was no body to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Uh, oh, that, oh, uh, this, this is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and the whole story falls apart. I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim may have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Did you, spot hmm. it? did you spot it? I did. I see you heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. 
Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Okay. I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time was probably coming from the television. That would be right here, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Alright. So, it's this with the electricity bidding out from noon to six. Objection! Hold it right there. The prosecution has said that there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Uh, you couldn't have heard a television or a video. Gah! I will... Uh. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Wait! I remember now. Mr. Sawit, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, oh, that's so weird. That and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. I, er, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawitch. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Actually, I did hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Oh, well, that was easy. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You, with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The deck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submit it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright... It appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? Yes. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hands. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. <laughs> that voice was burned into your mind. 
That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That day... I... I never... Look, look, the clock, I heard, no, I mean, I saw... Don't hit him with your hair, that's not... Shut him. up, shut up, shut up, I hate you! <laughs> I, I, it was him, I tell you, I saw him! He, he killed her, and he should burn, burn, give him death! <laughs> order, order in this court, I say. Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright, Your Honor, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is writing on this. I better think it through carefully. Your, Your Honor, the sound of Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Ask the name. Try sounding the clock, I think. Try sounding the clock. Okay. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25! Ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? Well, it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of their murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. Hmm. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it, I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Oh, did we lose? No. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Solid. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Crap. Objection! Not so fast, Crap. Mr. Sawit. Mia, I mean Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you get a... You can't still win. Try thinking outside the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and ask yourself why. Think through it. Why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right? Right, right. Can you think of a reason why the clock would be three hours slow? I'm gonna say yes, but we're gonna, you're gonna help me with that. Yeah. Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence. Oh. 
You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. <laughs> Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Alright, let's see. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris on the day before the murder. Well, I don't know if that did anything. A statue in the shape of the Tinko is really rather heavy. Let me look at everything first. Okay. And then, if I still don't get it. Time of death, 731. I feel like there's something here. That's just the date. Okay. Um... Electricity in Mrs. Stone's building was out from noon to six on the day of the crime. But that would be why it's slow, right? No. No. It's a battery power clock. It doesn't plug in. Oh, okay. Um. Oh. Th this one's tricky because it doesn't explicitly tell you what you're looking for. Um. So you're... You're looking for proof the clock was running slow. Mm -hmm. Maybe the clock wasn't actually running slow. Okay. So maybe she was killed at one. No. Okay. Um. Oh! Oh! Her clock was... She got the thinker. Her clock was set to Paris time. Yes. Got it. Got it! The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit, or should I say, Mr. Did It? Oh, I get it, Mr. Sawit. <laughs> ah, that was funny. It went way over, <laughs> way over my head. <laughs> Did you just have a seizure? Just fainted. Oh. He was foaming at the mouth. Order, order, I say. Oh, I have a cheese pad in front. Well. This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Yeah. Hooray! Seymour Butts is free. And with that, this court is adjourned. Cool, this is a fun game. It turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew! I still can't believe we won! Right! Good job in there! Congratulations! Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you! Not at all, not at all! You fought your own battles in there! It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the chief looking this happy. 
If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no. I mean, bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. A Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> ah, poor Larry. I was about to call him Harry. Yeah. Um, thanks! I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate! Dinner? Movie? My treat! Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Sorry, I didn't realize that was me. Oh, hey! Here, take this, it's a present! Is that the murder weapon? A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Oh. Really? You, you made this. Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick, can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Doesn't that just make you want to cry? Stop. Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something you can show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Huh. The statue in the shape of the finger. It's rather heavy. I'm at a little bit of a loss with this one. It's, at, it's the statue because she took something that's heavy on a trip around the other side of the world. Okay, that's. I was thinking it might be that because it was like a, the match of his. Right. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about the clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance <coughs> of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. Gotcha. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry. You were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Oh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so, my first trial came to a close. 
Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me. Either. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. How interesting. All, All right. right, so that's the end of chapter one of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Awesome. Do you want to continue? Uh, or do you want to take a break let's take here? take a break. All right. Uh, I'm just going to give a generic sign-off that I can edit in if we need it. All right, well, that's this episode of Phoenix Wright. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, feel free to leave comments, uh, suggestions for how we should voice future characters, Especially anything like that. if you know them, because I don't. I don't right. know what we're doing here, but I'm having a good time. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. All right, we'll see you next time.